nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. The best way to think about anything that's as small as a billionth is to think about it in respect to something else that we think we understand. So what I want to do is to start with a series of pictures that I pulled off the web that show first reduction in size, starting from an area which is a thousand kilometers, about 600 miles across, and then we're going to go down till we get to the size that we can see with our eyes, and then instead of making things smaller, we'll make them bigger, and eventually we'll get down to the nanoscale, and in order to do that, we're going to have to drop down by 15 orders of magnitude, 10 to the 15th. So we'll start with the southeastern United States, state of Florida. The little red thing in the middle is going to be expanded on the next picture by a factor of 10. So the little red one that fills up the center of this is now the entire picture here. And we've gone from 1,000 kilometers to 100 kilometers across, 60 miles across. We're in northwest Florida inside that little red box. And we'll go down again to 10 kilometers. We're in the state capital, Tallahassee. Go down again to one kilometer, and we're at the National Magnet Laboratory, which is where the most powerful magnetic fields that you can get at are. Go down another factor of 10. We're at 100 meters, which is about 100 yards. Lakes and oaks. Down to 10 meters, we're in the top of an oak tree. Down to one meter, we're in an oak tree. These oaks look a little different from the oaks in Illinois where I live, but they are oaks nevertheless. Go down to 100 millimeters, which is 10 centimeters, which is about four inches, and we're on top of an oak leaf. Now, this is the first actual size picture. So we started with a very large view of southern Florida. Now we've brought it down so that it's actual size. All these have been reduced. Now we're going to start expanding and start making them bigger. Go down to 10 millimeters with the surface of the leaf with the central spine coming out and the branches coming off of that. This is enlarged 10 times. Down to one millimeter. One millimeter is a tenth of a centimeter, which is about a twenty-fifth of an inch. And you can see the surface of the leaf. You can begin to see the substructure in the green part. Now we're going to go down to 100 microns. Now 100 microns is a particular length size. It's the scale at which most human eyes don't work much longer. I mean, this is the size of a human hair, which is something I don't know a lot about. But if you, if you look on a surface and you put one of these down, almost all of us could see this. You'd take a hair and you'd see it on the surface. If you go down by another factor of 10 to 10 microns, most of us cannot see this. Some individuals can, most of us cannot. We're not at the nanoscale yet. We've got a long way to go still. Down to one micron, the nucleus of a cell. And the nanoscale is normally defined as lying between 100 nanometers, which is the structure of chromatin, and one nanometer. And this factor of 100 is sort of by the definition of the marketplace, what we normally think of as the nanoscale. Chromatin is the way that DNA is stored in many organisms. You see these coiled up worm-like things that in fact fill, for instance, the center of a virus. If we go down from 100 nanometers, which is the largest end of the nanoscale, to 10 nanometers, right in the middle of the nanoscale, you see the double strands of DNA. Okay, so now you're beginning to see the individual molecular subunits at the scale of nanostructures. And so this is an important thing. The fact that from one nanometer of individual atoms and molecules up to 100 nanometers, the structure of chromatin, this is the scale of nature. And one of the reasons that nanostructures are so interesting and important to us is that this length scale from one to 100 nanometers is the length scale of nature. It's the length scale on which we are designed. There are many smaller things in physics, but this is the one that's sort of concomitant with, with nature. So let's look at some nano objects that actually exist on this length scale. That's a flu virus. He's been magnified 300,000 times. He has beautiful spherical symmetry and so on. But he's a nanoparticle. He's a large nanoparticle. Bacteriophage, slightly smaller nanoparticle. Those are naturally occurring nanoparticles. Here's some artificial ones. These particular ones were made at Chad Merkin's lab at Northwestern. But the point is, you see a large nanoparticle in the middle, which is gold. You see small nanoparticles around the outside. Those are also gold. They've been magnified half a million times so that you can see them. They're held together by molecules that you can't see. But these are artificial structures that have been made on this length scale. Why is this interesting? Well, we'll get to that later. So far, we're just talking about what does exist on this length scale. And this is the world's smallest abacus. Um, it actually consists of 
carbon-60 molecules, which are called buckyballs, and they're shaped like a soccer ball, made out of carbon, and they can be moved from one position to another on the surface. And so you can use this just like an abacus. You can move this, the carbon-60s from one place to another and do adding and subtracting in that way. Now one question you might ask is, how do you move these C60s? You clearly can't move them with your finger. You can't move them with the tip of a pencil. So how do you move them? You can actually get on the website and move them with your joystick, but physically, how would you move something this small? And that, in fact, is one of the interesting issues about nanoparticles.